This video is brought to you by News Voice. The news is broken. Almost all of the US media is owned by just a handful of big corporations. Fake news is obviously a huge problem as well, and finding something unbiased can be hard. News Voice is revolutionizing the news landscape. It's an app that gives you a personalized news feed by aggregating major news sites, as well as international and independent media, giving some much needed balance. Each news story shows multiple sources, which are all tagged with their bias and perspective. The news affects almost everything in our lives. What we hear and what we read shapes which people we trust, what we eat, what we buy, how we vote, and even how we think. News Voice is created by its readers, as you can upvote stories that you find interesting so more people will see them. It's essentially a democratised platform for news. Plus, it saves you time. You get all the news and all the sources in one app so that you can be better informed. And it's totally free. So get started with News Voice today, for free through the link below. It's available on both Google Play and the Apple App Store. And now that's out of the way, let's get into today's video. Thailand is a country capable of attracting Buddhist monks, adventure-seeking tourists, as well as the types you might find in The Hangover Part 2 all at the same time. There are many reasons why we have all heard stories of incredible parties in Bangkok and not in other places like Brunei or Malaysia. Reasons like this one. Thailand leads Asia in legalizing medical marijuana. Next shark. Thailand may become first in Southeast Asia to allow same-sex unions. Japan Times. Oh yes, beaches, marijuana, LGBT rights. Thailand seems like the Asian version of California, but with a monarchy and one that is a little bit easier on the wallet. However, lately, Thailand is in the news for headlines like this. Protests in Thailand are making history. For the first time in decades, people are openly defying the authority of the monarchy, Al Jazeera. To give you an idea of what we're talking about, since July 2020, thousands of Thai people have taken to the streets to ask for a total change of regime, change the constitution, reform the monarchy, and hold free elections. Fun fact, instead of raising their fist or hand, Thai people raise these three fingers. And yeah, this is straight out of the Hunger Games movie trilogy. More about that though, later. But let's get back to our story for just now, because trust me when I say that Thai people have no shortage of reasons to protest. We're talking about one of the most authoritarian countries in the world. Thailand's political system is a hybrid between absolute monarchy, theocracy, and military dictatorship. Sounds fun, right? In fact, the Thai royal house is the richest in the world, surpassing even the Petro monarchies, and it has far more power than any European monarchy. And you're probably thinking, come on Grant, if they're so authoritarian, how is it possibly have so much tourism? How is it possible that there are so many digital nomads who go there to live? Cities like Bangkok and Chiang Mai are trendy destinations for digital nomads, which for those who don't know, is people who work online who could live anywhere in the world and who choose to live in Thailand. And yes, Thailand can be a fantastic country for a Westerner. But if you are Thai, you might not think so. Thai man faces lengthy jail term for sarcastic remark about King's dog, Telegraph. To give you an idea, Thailand has the fourth largest prison population in the world, just behind Turkmenistan, Cuba, and of course, the United States. And just a side note here, yes, the United States has the largest prison population in the world. But we've already talked about that here on Visual Politic before. The irony of the freest country in the world locking up the most people. The point is that, compared to Thai prisons, those in the United States look like five-star resorts. And, as we'll see later, it's very easy to end up in a Thai prison. And all this explains such intense protests as this one. Thailand protests. Thousands rally for third straight day despite government ban. BBC. However, None of this news is going to attract much attention. In previous visual politic videos, we have talked about Thai politics. And if there is one thing that characterizes this country, it is the regime changes. To give you an idea, since 1932, Thailand has suffered an average of one coup d'etat every four years. Regime changes are so commonplace in this country that they don't even make the news anymore. However, these protests are special and maybe just maybe, this time, we will see real regime change. Pay attention, because today's video has everything. Economics, living gods, and sex. Lots of sex. And even 
a couple of extra floozies thrown in for good measure. So the question we're asking today are, what makes these protests so significant? What are the protesters asking for? What is the real problem in Thailand? And why? Why have they adopted the Hunger Games salute as a form of protest? Today, we're going to answer all of these questions, but first, let's take a look at some history. A divine command. This is not the first time that we've talked about a theocracy on visual politic. In many other countries, such as Saudi Arabia or Iran, religion and politics go hand in hand. However, the case of Thailand goes much further than that. In this case, the Thai king is considered as the direct representation of God on Earth. Pure and simple. In fact, the current king of Thailand is known as Rama X. Rama the Tenth. Before him, there was Rama IX, Rama the Ninth, and so on, all the way back to Rama the First. Rama is the name given after the coronation and is literally the Thai name for the goddess Vishnu. To give you an idea, until 1932, Thailand was an absolute monarchy. Since then, there has been a constitution that limits the power of the king. But even so, the monarch still has a lot of power. I mean, at the end of the day, he's a god. However divine they may be, Thai kings are moved by very human passions. King Rama IX, also known by his first name Bohimbal, was crowned when he was 23 years old, after someone murdered his older brother, Rama VIII. Now, this all might sound crazy in and of itself, but wait, because you haven't seen anything yet. It would be logical to think that Rama IX, also known as Lord Upon Our Heads or Lord of Life, was born in Thailand, right? After all, he is the king of the country. Well, that would be a big mistake. Rama IX was born in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Later, his family moved to Switzerland, where he studied at the university there. So let's take a second just here to imagine that situation. This man, who's living in the West, is out with his Swiss friends, and they ask him, so, what are you going to be when you grow up? And he goes, me? Well, I'm going to dedicate myself to being a deity in Thailand. Come on, lads, let's do some shots. What's more, after so many years of education in the West, Rama the Ninth acquired certain habits. Specifically, he learned to play jazz. And, in fact, came to compose his own pieces. Let's get back to our story. As you can imagine, if the Thai people consider their king to be a god, any offence against the monarchy is blasphemy, or as they call it, crimes of le majeste, because this is not a minor issue. Thailand's les majeste laws are known to be very generic. That is, it is not clear what counts as blasphemy and what does not. The only thing they are clear about is the penalties, which can be up to 15 years in prison. And there are cases that are, to put it mildly, totally unreasonable. All the cases I'm going to give you right now are real examples, so pay attention. Translating an unauthorized biography of the king? Two years in prison. Insulting the king's dog on the internet? 37 years in prison. Throwing black paint over a portrait of the king? 10 years in prison. And hold on, because we haven't talked about the crimes of sedition yet. Watch out for the list of things that can land you in jail in Thailand wearing a red shirt, eating sandwiches as a form of political protest, or showing a piece of paper that says, showing papers is not a crime. I repeat, these are all real cases that have put real people in real prisons. And of course, among these terrible crimes of sedition is the salute from the film, The Hunger Games. Her name is... Apparently, in 2014, some protesters started to use it. The gesture caught fire among young people. Since then, raising three fingers like this is a crime in Thailand. And now, many of you may be wondering how it is possible that the Thai people have not risen up against their king before. The monarchy in Thailand has existed for centuries, after all. Well, the truth is that, until a few years ago, the king of Thailand was a really popular figure. To give you an idea, more than 12 million people went to King Buimbal's funeral to say goodbye to him. And remember that Thailand has 64 million inhabitants. That means that on October the 25th, 2017, one out of every six Thai people dropped what they were doing to go to the Grand Palace in Bangkok to say goodbye to their god king. <laughs>
Even in cinemas, before seeing a movie, Thai people have to stand up and listen to the Royal Thai Anthem. And now, I know what you're going to say. If the monarchy is so popular in the country, why do they have so many coups? Well, let's take a look at that right now. A dictatorship every four years. One of the main advantages of democracy is that it allows for the change of power without bloodshed. Instead of spending money on weapons for a civil war, candidates spend it on electoral materials. Well, in the absence of democracy, the opposite is true. In Thailand, candidates spend as much on weapons as they do elsewhere on advertising. Thailand has suffered 19 coups since 1932. Of these 19, 12 were successful and another 7 were not. All these coup d'etats follow a similar pattern. A faction of the army organises the coup d'etat and it is the king who decides whether he wants to support it or not. The loser has to go into exile and the winner becomes the country's dictator for a few years. Usually about 4. I mean, come on, they're basically like elections but only one person has the vote and that person is the king. Some of these coups have been really violent. For example, in 1973, several students demonstrated against the military government of the time. 77 students were massacred and 850 were seriously injured in the protest. That same night, the king announced that the military government had to resign. Years later, the dictator Thanom Ketikatshorn was exiled. However, other coups were much more peaceful. For example, the 1957 coup lasted just a few hours. In this case, General Sarit Thanarat sent his loyal troops to take over the most important military facilities. He was supported by a large group of civilians who were protesting in the streets. Hours later, this man became Thailand's new Prime Minister. The former leader went into exile in Europe and returned to the country six years later to become Prime Minister again. So it seems that in Thailand, military dictatorships come and go, but one thing remains, and that thing is the monarchy. And you may be wondering, but how can the people there support this system? Well, one fairly convincing answer is the economy. With or without a lack of freedom, Thailand is one of the richest countries in the region. As a comparison, the GDP per capita, in parity with purchasing power, is around $18,000. That of the Philippines is less than half, $8,500, and in China, it's $17,000. While many parts of China still do not have modern hospitals, Thailand has public health. <laughs> Just to give you an idea, while their Vietnamese neighbours were coming out of the famines in the late 1980s, the Thais had the largest automotive and hard drive factories in the region, not to mention being a real tourist powerhouse. In 2018, they were the 10th most visited country in the world, far above Japan or Greece. So how can Thailand have such a relatively developed economy with such a dreadful political system? Well, mainly for two reasons. Its currency, the baht, is one of the most stable in the world, and Thailand has always had good relations with the West, particularly with Japan. So now you'll say, so what's changed now, Grant? Why are these protests so important now? Well, listen up. The Middle Income Trap in October 2016, the beloved leader King Rama IX died in hospital at the age of 88. In a country so dependent on a single person, the death of the king is a time bomb. But in this case, the country was on the verge of approving a new constitution through a referendum. As you can imagine, it was a referendum where the army told the citizens which way to vote. Because? Well, just because that's what Thailand is like. In this case, in the absence of a king, the military junta put a senate in place and announced free elections. In other words, as free as they can be in Thailand. Basically, the army would supervise the process, but at least opposition parties would be able to run. And what happens when you allow opposition political parties to appear? Well, surprise, surprise, new opposition parties emerge. For the first time in decades, Thailand's parliament had a democratic opposition party with a major presence. We are talking about the Future Forward Party, founded by Mr. Thanatorn Joan Gurun Karanakit? Joan Gurun Karanakit. I'd like to apologise formally here to all the people of Thailand, although, let's be honest, I don't think I'm going there anytime soon. Anyway, this is a formation that proposes a change in the constitution that limits the powers of the king, guarantees free elections, and human rights. And in the March 2019 elections, they got 18% of the vote, which is not bad considering that there are more than seven major parties that make up the parliament. In fact, Future Forward was left with a third of the political power. As you can imagine, the Lord Thanaton 
Chung Rung Rongkit is one of the most influential leaders right now in Thailand. And by the way, the party's leader is also known in Thailand for being the son of one of the biggest millionaires in the country. Far from working against him, this only reinforced his image. Being able to live a life of luxury and without worries, he decided to risk everything to improve the country. And believe me, the risk is real. His party was banned. He faces jail. But Thailand's Tanatorn Duong Grung Grokkit vows to fight on CNN. The news you've just heard could mean the end of the Future Forward Party. Nevertheless, many things have changed in Thailand. The first is the economy. Remember I told you that Thailand was one of the most prosperous countries in the region? Well, it's true. It was. While all the countries of Southeast Asia are growing at a rate of 5 or 6 or 7%, Thailand barely exceeds 2% growth. In economics, this has a name. The middle income trap. That is, there are many countries that manage to escape from poverty and reach what we call average income. However, they do not manage to make the leap to being a wealthy country. Countries like Brazil, Colombia and Thailand seem to have stagnated due to this situation. If you remember, one of Thailand's main industries is tourism. It accounts for more than 12% of the country's GDP. And what is the sector most affected by the coronavirus? Exactly. Tourism. After tourism, another of its main industries in this country is the automotive industry. Well, check this out. General Motors to lay off all 1,500 plant workers in Thailand following sale of its factories. Reuters. We're not just talking about General Motors either. Triumph, the motorcycle manufacturers, have also closed plants in Thailand, and many others are threatening to do so. In total, car production in Thailand has dropped by 30% in 2020, and its GDP has fallen by more than 12%. All of this translates to thousands of people being unemployed. However, this is not the only thing that has changed in this country. At the beginning of this video, I promised you sex, and here it is. Confined with 20 concubines. Yeah, that is how the current king of Thailand has spent the confinement, in a mansion in Germany with 20 concubines. And I know what some of you will say. How do you know that all 20 of these women were concubines? What if they were just his servants or even his friends? Well, the truth is that King Vajaralongakorn has had a long and well-known relationship with the concubines. Thai playboy king anoints lover as his official concubine, The Times. Other kings would say that they have a collaborator or a special friend. But in Thailand, they call things by their name. The official concubine. It's as simple as that. There are even videos on Wikileaks where you can see, you can see a lot. In fact, you can see everything about this king. Of course, on Visual Politic, we're not interested in judging everyone's sex life. As long as he isn't breaking any laws, this man can do whatever he wants. And believe us, he does. Now remember that he's not just a king though. He is also Rama the 10th, nothing less than a god. <laughs> You see, during his reign, the previous king, Rama IX, had earned the respect of the Thai people. In such a conservative society, Rama IX represented righteousness and discipline. His son is just the opposite. He's been divorced three times, has four illegitimate children, and has appointed his dog as commander of the Air Force. If all of this were not enough, King Rama X does not even live in Thailand. In 2016, he bought a mansion in Bavaria, in southern Germany, and wants to rule Thailand from there. In fact, this is one of his conditions for approving the 2017 constitution. They had to let him reign from Germany. And I know what you're thinking now. What if this king simply doesn't want to reign? I mean, that could be the case. He wants to get away from politics and live his own life. But the reality is quite the opposite. Two weeks ago, the Thai king issued a royal decree placing two army units under his direct control, rather than under the normal military hierarchy. World Politics Review. Oh yeah, that's right. Rama X is taking steps to restore the absolute monarchy in Thailand. He is gaining more and more control over the army. In the 2019 elections, he banned his sister from running from prime minister. And that's not the worst thing. You see, until 2017, the assets of the Thai royal house were managed by the Crown Property Bureau, an institution controlled by the Ministry of Finance. 
To give you an idea, these assets comprise something like a sovereign fund, with investments in local companies. For example, the Thai royals are the main shareholders of one of the largest banks in the country, the Siam Commercial Bank. Well, the first thing that Rama the Tenth did as soon as he came to the throne was to take full control of this office. It is estimated that the institution controls $40 billion that are now solely in the hands of the king. And it doesn't end there. In addition to that, his salary has been raised. From 2021, the Royal Thai House will receive more than $1.1 billion from the government. And all this for ruling from his mansion in Germany. In other words, Thailand has all the ingredients for a popular revolt. Economic malaise, a corrupt elite that has lost the trust of the majority of its citizens, and a leader, Mr. Tanaton. Capable of bringing together all of this discontent. And what, might you wonder, are these protesters asking for? Their main demands are to put an end to crimes against the royal leader, to force the crown to be transparent with its assets, and to prohibit the king from instigating coup d'etats. These might seem like very moderate claims. But remember that we are talking about what is perhaps the most monarchical country in the world. And that's why it's so incredible that it's only now that we're starting to hear things like this. Thai protesters call for end of monarchy on King's birthday, Deutsche Weil. Keep in mind that we are not talking about just one or two protests. The demonstrations in Thailand began in February 2020, and the King's birthday was the end of July. In July 2020, many more people started to take to the streets. In squares, in universities, there have been protests in all of the main cities. So far, there have been no deaths, but there have been several attempts by the army and the police to suppress the protests. However, the demonstrators continue to protest. So now the question is over to you. Do you think that these protests will create a real change in Thailand? What do you think of the Thai monarchy and of monarchies in general? Do you think it's an outdated institution or perhaps one that still has a place in our time? And will I ever get to go to Thailand? Leave your answers in the comments below. As always, we really hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit like if you did, and don't forget to subscribe for brand new videos. Also, don't forget to check out our friends at the Reconsider Media Podcast. They provided the vocals in this episode that were not my dulcet tones. Finally, this channel is possible because of Patreon and our patrons on that platform. Please consider joining them and supporting our mission of providing independent political coverage. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. If you want to learn more about politics and world affairs and hear some more of my lovely voice, come check out the Reconsider podcast, where we don't do the thinking for you. Find Reconsider at www.reconsidermedia.com or on Apple or Google Play or your favorite podcatcher.